Comrades, ministers, citizens, I write to you in celebration of a great victory in the campaign against Austria. For a long time, the monarchies of Europe have wanted to destroy France and all that it stands for. Liberté, égalité, et fraternité. So now, as all diplomatic routes are expended, the only option is war. Only war can prove that the Bourbons will never be returned to our great land. Austria confides and schemes with the British, so I have decided that it is them who deserve our wrath first. It was my hope to assemble a Grande Armée and march straight on Vienna, as you know. I assembled this army from Strasbourg and the remaining corps of Ney and Juno. We marched to Bavaria, hoping to find our friend King Maximilian Joseph, repelling the Austrian advance. When we arrived, I found that he had repelled a smaller Austrian incursion into his lands. With Bavaria thus secure, we marched along the north bank of the Isar until we found the Danube and the road to Vienna. We met little resistance along this road, and our men were in good spirits. It wasn't long, however, until we found out that we had caught the Austrians off guard by attacking in winter. And they were massing at Vienna, waiting for us to come. To Vienna then, before they could fully mobilise. We reached Vienna on the Wednesday in the third week of February. We found a stout Austrian force defending, backed by many citizen defenders. Mobs of musket-wielding men waited in the city streets. On top of this, Ferdinand von Österreich-Este led an army not far away that was calling for aid. In order to seize the opportunity before us, before more Austrians arrived, we attacked the next day at dawn. It was a cold, snowy morning on Thursday, and we rushed to start the assault as soon as possible. But the snows delayed the cannons, so by mid-morning we were ready. We attacked the area known as the Valring before assaulting the town in order to draw out the Austrian defenders. My grand battery was set up in the Valring forest and the first guns sounded at 11.02 a.m. The infantry, 1st Battalion to 6th Battalion, marched south towards the small hills to try and take those positions while the cavalry, 2 battalions of lancers and 2 of chasseurs, remained with the battery to ward off any flanking attacks to the east. The Austrian troops were drawn out by the guns and we marched forth for them. We marched quickly to try and take the hillock, known to the troops now as Voltigeurs Rest. Upon scaling the hill, our Voltigeurs noticed the majority of the Austrian army on its slopes, and Colonel, Colonel Maurice signalled for his troops to fire upon the enemy. The line battalions arrived soon after firing upon the enemy ranks, but not before the many light troops had been engaged in melee and Colonel Maurice himself was killed. At this time, that the cavalry noted 
the masses of citizen mobs striding forth from the city to flank our guns and Marshal Juno's signal to charge. The 1st Grenadier Battalion was charged with securing the left flank in conjunction with the cavalry, as much of the mob had been soundly routed. All the while, the 1st Battalion of Old Guards was placed to protect the left flank. But Colonel Jacques, foolish in his actions, led to the loss of many men to their light divisions. The right flank had been soundly routed, but the army of Ferdinand von Oesterreich Est was arriving and his cavalry battalions were engaged by Juno. Ultimately, the heavier horsemen of the enemy were able to break many of our men and Juno was forced to retreat. In light of this, I sounded the withdrawal to the cannons and ordered the cannons to face the new threat, while I myself routed a mob that had begun Sir, to shoot upon our, our cannons. Is under attack. Our withdrawal was dogged by enemy cavalry, who managed to break the first grenadiers, but not before Colonel Pickamall himself had personally killed Ferdinand, a detail that may save him from military reprimand later. With Ferdinand gone, their army was in disarray and attacked in a piecemeal fashion. But they knew if they could not move us, Vienna would be at our mercy. They sent many battalions up to try and push us back. But our glorious infantry held strong, even though they were tired after hours of fighting. Come on, Charlie, that's hot tea! Look at him, it's 
their final attack came from a proud regiment of Chevaux-Légère. But like all that came before, they were once again repelled, and we stood on the battlefield victorious. In taking Vienna, I estimate we deployed less than half the number of Austrians, but some say we killed five times more than our own losses. I myself believe it to be closer to three times, but the victory was heroic. We occupied Vienna at five o'clock on the same day, and I allowed our weary troops to rest. It was but three days later when Emperor Francis came to me and sued for peace. For now, we hold on to Vienna as a deterrent to future wars. But if Prussia or Russia will strike against us, we cannot trust the Austrians. So for now, we wait here with our prize, while I instruct Ney to build another army, the Grand Army of the North, and be waiting for Prussia to move. But comrades, let the bells ring out in Paris, for France has another great victory. Tell the people to toast Napoleon. Vive la France et vive l'Empereur.